Today's video is a bite-sized introduction to the artist Dora Chapman. Hello darlings, thank you so much for joining me. Today's video is another in the series of Bite Size Art History, this time about the Australian artist Dora Chapman. If you'd like to check out the first one that I did about Peter Booth, there will be a link above as well as at the end of this video. I know it has been some time, but I'm going to try and do them more often as I have been getting some good feedback from those videos. So I hope you enjoy this short introduction to the artist Dora Chapman. Dora Chapman was born in Adelaide in 1911, studied at the Adelaide School of Arts, where she started a promising career as a realist painter. But Chapman's story is one of sacrifice. She met the painter James Kant in Sydney in the 40s, and they co-founded the Studio of Realist Art. They were married in 1946, and Dora took up teaching to support her husband's art career, putting her own on hold. In the book, James Kant and Dora Chapman, Ron Radford states that, from their first meeting in the mid-1940s, Dora regarded James as the greater artist. As a consequence, Dora frequently gave and James took. The responsibility of financially supporting the team fell largely to Dora throughout most of their marriage. Chapman retired from teaching in 1969, and although she had been producing art while still working, it was at this time that she really started experimenting with her unique style that she's known for today. She started creating stylized female portrait heads in silk screen printing, producing serigraphs like The Girl with a Long Nose and Katinka. In the 1970s, her husband couldn't paint on canvas due to advanced multiple sclerosis, so Chapman decided to start making pots for him to paint. After his death in 1982, Chapman realised that she had neglected her own career and started exhibiting her work more, with a small retrospective exhibition in 1987, as well as other exhibitions at the Art Gallery of South Australia. When she died in 1995, Dora Chapman left nearly all of her and James Kant's works to the Art Gallery of South Australia, as they had been very supportive of both artists. When you go to the gallery now, Chapman's work is very strikingly displayed, even more so than her husband. A couple of years ago, they displayed many of the silk screen heads all on one wall, and it looks spectacular. So if you're visiting the Art Gallery of South Australia, please look out for those beautiful heads and appreciate the fact that Dora Chapman never let go of her artistic dreams. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to Dora Chapman and hopefully it inspires you to look further at more of her work. Please subscribe to this channel if you love art history and creativity in general. And until the next video, bye.